Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about solving radical equations and inequalities. If you look over here to the right, you will see that I have kind of listed out the steps of things we're going to be doing. We're starting off by solving square roots, going into cube roots, then radical equations, and then radical inequalities. First thing is this one over here on the left. Very simple, we only have one square root. We're going to start off by subtracting 1, because we're trying to isolate that square root. So we have 4 equals the square root of x minus 2. We now have to get rid of the square root. We do that by squaring both sides of the equation. Whatever we do to one, we have to do to the other. Then I have to add two. So 18 equals x. Now we're going to do the same thing over here on the right, except we have two square roots. We have one on the left side and one on the right. The one on the left is all by itself. There's nothing extra there. And I would agree, or I hope you would agree, that this is the most complicated of both square roots. So I like that it is by itself. So I'm going to square both sides. My more complicated square root now cancels, and I have a regular x plus 15. On the right, I'm going to have to foil this, because there's separation with a plus in the middle. So I have a 5 plus square root of x times 5 plus square root of x. This side's going to have to be foiled x plus 15. I'm trusting you remember how to FOIL. So we have 25 plus, and we have 5 square root of x and 5 square root of x again, so that's 10 square root of x. Square root of x times square root of x is a straight up regular old x. I have an x on my left and an x on my right. I'm going to subtract one, and you will see that they cancel on both sides. That's pretty awesome. So now I have 15 equals 25 plus 10 square root of x. Subtract the 25 because I'm trying to isolate my square root. Now I'm going to divide by 10. So negative 1 equals square root of x. Well, to get rid of a square root, what do we do? We square it. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1 equals regular x. Awesome. Except... Look at this down at the bottom. I wrote myself a little reminder. Check for extraneous solutions. So on the first one, we're not going to have to worry about it. I'll just tell you now. But in general, you should always check. Let's take this 1. We're going to plug it back in and see if it actually holds true for this equation. Now let's do that just over here. So we have a square root of 1 plus 15. Does that equal, so I'm going to put a little question mark above it, 5 plus the square root of 1? Well. 1 plus 15 is 16. Square root of 16 is a 4. On this side, 5 plus, what's the square root of 1? Well, that's a 1. So that's 6 on that side. Are those two equal? They are, in fact, not. So this is an extraneous solution. Extraneous solution. And that happens, or it really means that this doesn't solve this problem. And that just happens because these two graphs, if we were to graph both of these, there's no intersection. All right, let's go on to the next one. And if you're my students, yes, you actually have to check them every time. Now let's solve a cube root equation. We start off by isolating the root. In this case, it's a third root, and it's written more like an exponent. And that's fine. We're in exponential form instead of radical form. No big deal. Now we have an x plus 2 to the 1 third equals negative 1. I want to get rid of that exponent, and I do that by multiplying by, or sorry, raising it to its reciprocal. I have an exponent of 1 third. I'm going to raise it to the 3 over 1. When I have an exponent raised to another exponent, what do I do? Well, it's power of powers, and I multiply them. What's 1 third times 3 over 1? Well, that's just a 1. So I have 3x plus 2 raised to the first, and then I have a negative 1 cubed. Well, that's just negative 1. So now I subtract the 2, 3x equals negative 3, divide by 3, and x is negative 1. Again, I have to check for extraneous solutions. Let's do that over here. This is where I'm going to check. And I have a 4. Uh, no, I don't have a 4. That's the next problem. I'm going to do 3 times negative 1 plus 2 raised to the 1 third. I'm going to add 1 to it. Does that equal 0? 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus 2. So that's negative 1 to the 1 third, plus 1. Cubed root of 1, or sorry, of a negative 1 is negative 1, plus 1. 
Yes, that does in fact equal zero. Awesome, our answer works. Let's go on to the next one where we are solving radical equations. This is a slightly more complicated one. We have a fourth root and we now have a number out in front. We still start off the same way. We want to isolate whatever it is here in parentheses that has the root applied to it. So I'm going to add 12. 4, 3x plus 6, quarter. There we are. Now what do I do? Well, I still have to isolate my square root, so I'm going to divide by, on both sides, the 4. 3x plus 6 to the 1 fourth equals 12 divided by 4 is a 3. And just like last time, I'm going to take both sides and raise it to the reciprocal. In this case, it's a 1 fourth, so I'm raising it to the 4 over 1. If that was a 3 fourths, I'd raise it to the 4 over 3. So it's the same principle, no matter what this is. Now on the left, these two cancel out and become a 1. I'm left with 3x plus 6. That is a parenthesis. All right. Equals 3 raised to the 4th power, which is 81. Good job. Minus 6. 3x equals 81 minus 6. That's uh, 75. Divided by 3 on both sides, and we find that x is 25. But we have to double check and make sure that that's not an extraneous solution. So I take that and I plug it back in up top. Let's do that over here, our check. So I have 4 times 3 times my x value, 25, plus 6, raised to the 1 fourth, minus 12. Does that equal 0? Let's simplify the inside. 3 times 25 is 75, plus 6. Well, that's 81 to the 1 fourth, minus 12. Does that equal 0? The fourth root of 81, well, that's 3. 4 times 3, that's 12. Minus 12, yes, that does in fact equal 0. Awesome. We are good to go to the next one. Next one, inequalities. It's our last one. It's our exciting one. We treat it exactly the same as everything else. Nothing fancy about it, actually. Subtract the 1 on both sides to isolate our square root. So now I have the square root of 5x minus 2 is greater than 3. I have to square both sides, 5x minus 2, because those just cancel, is greater than 9 plus 2. 5x is greater than 11, divide by 5. x must be greater than 11 fifths. Awesome. Let's just plug in a number just to be safe. Let's check it. Uh, what's a number that's greater than 11 fifths? Well, that's 2 and a fifth, or 2.2. Let's do um, 100. So if x equals 100, and we plug that in up in here, we have 5 times 100. That's rather large. Minus 2 is not going to change much. Square root, I'm still a big number. Plus 1, I'm definitely greater than 4. I'm going to say that that works, and this one is good. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please click that like button uh, down here below. I'm going to have links over here uh, to other videos that I've done and the button right, I'll put it over my finger. That is where you can click and subscribe to my channel. Hope you all have a great rest of your day.